Hi, this is Katie Larson with the Alliance for the Great Lakes. Welcome to Homeschool, where we are learning why the Great Lakes are so great. Today we are learning about watersheds and the water cycle in the real world. We'll start by looking at this Great Lakes Basin or watershed map. A basin or watershed is all the land that drains into a body of water. When rain or snow fall on the land, all that water goes into a watershed. This map shows the land that drains into the Great Lakes. All of the water that falls on that land eventually drains into one of the Great Lakes. The legend on this map tells us which color represents each of the lake's watersheds. Within the lake watersheds are smaller watersheds of land that drain into rivers, and these rivers drain into the lakes. All land is part of a watershed, so wherever you are, you are in a watershed. Even a puddle can be considered a tiny watershed. A tiny puddle's watershed could be part of a stream's watershed. And a stream's watershed could be part of a river's watershed. And a river's watershed could be part of a lake's watershed, like one of the Great Lakes, like Lake Erie, which is part of the Great Lakes watershed. Wow, watersheds are a lot like these nesting cups. Now I want us to think about the land around us and what happens to the rain that falls on that land. Where does the water go? What do you think happens to the rain in your neighborhood? It's all part of the water cycle. The main parts of the water cycle that we see are precipitation, like rain and snow, condensation, up in the clouds, and evaporation, like clothes drying on a clothesline on a warm, sunny day but I want us to think about what happens to the rain and snow that falls on the ground. Remember, that's part of a watershed. Does the water just stay there? Does it go up into the clouds? Does it go down into the ground? We're gonna go outside to find out what happens to water when it lands on the surfaces outside my home. I'm going to pour water onto a few surfaces outside. I'm pouring 300 milliliters, which is about 10 ounces or one and a quarter cup. There are lots of surfaces outside my home. What do you see? What do you think will happen to the water after I pour it? Make a prediction. We'll start by pouring water on the grass. I have 300 milliliters of water and I'm starting a stopwatch to time this experiment. Will the water seep into the ground? Does it form a puddle? Will it evaporate? What did you notice? It's only been 13 seconds. Did all of the water do the same thing? I'm noticing some of the water is flowing down the driveway, but it looks like most of the water disappeared into the soil. Where do you think it went? Our second test will be the curb at the end of the sidewalk. Wow, that moved quickly. That was only about five seconds. What did you notice? I saw the concrete get wet, but a lot of the water started flowing, kind of like a tiny river, into the storm drain. Lastly, I'll pour water on mulch and ground cover flowers. Look closely. What's happening to the water? Did you notice any changes in the soil? That only took about 10 seconds. Let's head back inside. Let's discuss that experiment. What did you notice when I poured water on the different surfaces? What were you wondering about? I noticed that the water on the grass and on the mulch and flowers seemed to seep in or infiltrate. I wondered what happens to water when it goes underground. Do plant roots take it up? Does some of that water become groundwater? When I poured the water on the sidewalk, I noticed that it formed a tiny river that flowed into the storm drain. It seems like some surfaces allow water to seep in. The term for that is permeable surfaces, like grass and mulch, soil and sand. Impermeable surfaces are the sidewalk, street, driveways, or parking lots. The sidewalk is made of concrete, and most streets and driveways and parking lots are made of asphalt. These types of surfaces do not allow water to seep in or infiltrate. There are a lot of options for each raindrop that falls from the clouds. Today or tomorrow, I'd like you to go on a scavenger hunt. This can be done online or outdoors or even looking out your window. You'll be looking for signs of the water cycle in the real world.